A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Monday, August 3rd, Joanne, Mary, and Salome, Myrrh Bearers. Psalm 81. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord, exalt before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad, you restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flocks found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled, and the men of Israel and Judah arose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Shirain as far as Gath and Ekron. And the people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. As soon as Saul saw David go out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. And the king said, Inquire whose son the boy is. And as soon as David returned from striking down the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. And as soon as he finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of his robe that was on him, and gave it to David, and his armor, and even his sword, and his bow, and his belt. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him, so that Saul set him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. As they were coming home, when David returned from striking down the Philistine, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they celebrated, Saul has struck down his thousands, 
and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very angry, and this saying displeased him. He said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. And what more can he have but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day on. The New Testament reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. Since much time had passed, and the voyage was now dangerous, because even the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. The majority decided to put out to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete facing both southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Now when the south wind blew gently, Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete close to the shore. But soon a tempestuous wind, called a northeaster, struck down from the land, and when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along, running along the lee of a small island called Cauda, we manage with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they use supports to undergird the ship. Then fearing that they would run aground on Sirtis, they lowered the gear and thus were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me, and not have set sail from Crete, and not incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul, you must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. A writing of Martin Chemnitz Why was Jesus' resurrection revealed to these women first? There are several answers. First, God was keeping his ancient custom of choosing what is foolish, undistinguished, and despised in the eyes of the world in order to put the strong and lofty to shame. These women were despised, not only due to the weakness of their gender, but also because of Galilee, their homeland. But God exalted them by revealing to them the resurrection of his Son, which is an excellent article of our faith. Indeed, he even sent them to the apostles to share the message of Christ's resurrection with them, so that they became, as the ancients say, like apostles to the apostles. Third, in this way, God wanted to prevent the accusation of the Jews. The high priest lied, saying that Christ's disciples had stolen the body of their master. In order to prove, the shamelessness and absurdity of this lie. It happened by God's marvelous providence that these women, 
came to the grave before the apostles. Now it is highly unlikely that these women could have stolen the body from the grave guarded by soldiers and closed by a large stone. Fourth, through the woman Eve, death came to all human beings. On account of this, Christ wanted his resurrection, which brings us righteousness and life, to be told to others by women. At the fall of the first human beings, these three worked together. The devil who deceived, the woman who proclaimed his talk further, the man who ate and corrupted human nature. So also, at Christ's resurrection, these three worked together. Christ, who rose and redeemed human nature, the angel who proclaimed the resurrection, and the women who carried the joyful message further. Now, if Christ was pleased with the zeal of these women, which was yet bound together with significant weakness of faith, and did not let them come away from the tomb empty, how much less will he let those go away empty, who in true faith seek him who rules at the right hand of the Father? Martin Chemnitz the Lord begin your task, Jesus will direct it. For his aid and counsel last, Jesus will perfect it. Every morn with Jesus rise, and when day is ended, in his name then close your eyes. Be to him commanded. Let us pray. Merciful God, your crucified and buried Son did not remain in the tomb for long. Give us joy in the tasks set before us, that we may carry out faithfully acts of service as did Joanne, Mary, and Salome offering to you the sweet perfume of our grateful hearts, so that we too may see the glory of your resurrection and proclaim the good news with unrestrained eagerness and fervor worked in us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal Lord, ruler of all, Graciously regard those who have been set in positions of authority among us, that, guided by your Spirit, they may be high in purpose, wise in counsel, firm in good resolution, and unwavering in duty, that under them we may be governed quietly and peaceably, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Joanne, Mary, and Salome, Myrrh Bearers Known in some traditions as the Faithful Women, the visit of these three persons and the other women to the tomb of Jesus on the first Easter morning is noted in the Gospel records of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Joanne is the wife of Chusa, a steward to Herod's household. Mary, the mother of James, the son of Alphaeus, was another of the women who faithfully provided care for Jesus and his disciples from the time of his Galilean ministry through his burial after the crucifixion. Salome, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, joined with the women both at the cross and in bringing the spices to the garden tomb. These faithful women have been honored in the church through the centuries as examples of humble and devoted service to the Lord.